Speaker. I call the honourable member Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate that. That's what they call me um, in caucus too. Um, I, uh, as Labour's veteran spokesperson, oh, that's true. Actually, as Labour's as Labour's veteran spokesperson, uh, I have the privilege to spend a lot of time with our veterans who have served in various conflicts uh, around the world and over the decades. And in, in recent times, I've, uh, like many members in this house. Uh, have had the opportunity to uh, lay wreaths and, and honour uh, the sacrifice and service of a number of our veterans uh, at the National War Memorial. And in the discussions that I've had uh, with uh, members of the RSA, uh, with members of different veterans groups, um, their response uh, to the War Memorial Park has, has been uniformed um, in every sense. Uh, the, their initial enthusiasm uh, and excitement when Helen Clark first uh, proposed the, uh, the Memorial Park uh, back in 2004 uh, was then followed with some trepidation and nervousness when uh, the current government uh, declared that it was going to abandon uh, those plans uh, and, um, and slow the process down. And for a while it looked as though uh, the opportunity to have the National uh, Memori War Memorial Park uh, in place by Anzac Day 2015 uh, was, was being lost and that the government looked as though it was losing focus. That trepidation has now been replaced by relief that uh, there is a process by which uh, the, the National War Memorial will be completed uh, in time for that centenary uh, commemoration of the landing at Gallipoli. And I have to say, Mr Speaker, uh, that veterans have also expressed um, their appreciation of the fact that this has been uh, more or less a, a bipartisan. I suppose bipartisan is the term that many people use, a multi-partisan uh, support from parties uh, around the parliament. And it has to be said that, uh, for the most part, they're not terribly concerned uh, with the intricacies of empowering legislation, uh, of, um, of the, uh, the powers that the Minister will be given, of any precedents that might be set, all that those veterans and their families and their descendants are concerned with uh, is the completion of that original vision that was first uh, espoused back in 2004. And they're pleased that uh, Parliament has found a way to ensure that, um, that, that, that that memorial will be completed in time. That's not to say that we as parliamentarians shouldn't be concerned uh, with the situation that we find ourselves in. And as other members have expressed, it is not ideal that uh, the government's procrastination around this issue has led us to the position where we are having to pass empowering legislation in order to complete the job. It, it wasn't necessary. If the national government had continued on with the plans that had been put in place, uh, had uh, continued on using the funding that had been set aside for this project, then we would not find ourselves in this position, and that has to be recognised as well. But, Mr Speaker, it is important on issues of national significance like this one that the opposition lends a hand to the government when it finds itself in this sort of trouble. And it is appropriate that we act in a constructive manner and get the outcome that the veterans, their families and, in fact, really all New Zealanders are looking for. So, although it's not ideal, it would have been unfortunate in the extreme if all opposition parties had chosen to vote against this legislation and make it more difficult for the government than necessary. And that brings me to the Greens' position. Whilst I respect uh, the arguments made by Gareth Hughes, um, I wonder if the Greens had found themselves holding the balance in this legislation, if this legislation would have lived and died on the Greens' vote, would they have voted the same way? Uh, that perhaps is a philosophical question that can never be answered. Well, well Gareth, Hughes, Gareth Hughes is nodding, which suggests to me that the Greens would have blocked the completion 
of the National War Memorial had they been given an opportunity to do so. And, and that, I think, is unfortunate. That is uh, what people, I guess, expect of Parliament, is that opposition parties will oppose for the sake of opposition. And it, and it would have been um, an interesting question whether or not the Greens really would have been prepared to stop the National War Memorial going ahead because Gareth Hughes said they want to see it happen. They like the idea of a park. They like the idea of a contemplative place where we can go and reflect on the sacrifice that our veterans made. We can reflect on the nature of war. We can reflect on our desire for a more peaceful future. But they're not going to vote for the legislation which is going to make it happen. And, I, and it, is, it is those sanctimonious barbs that, we, that, that other parties receive from the Greens that I think perhaps um, uh, betray their desire to put process in front of absolutely everything, including an outcome which all New Zealanders want and which is going to be good for Wellington, which the local community wants and, and which... Uh, is, is in the interests of our nation. So, m m Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker, I don't, I don't want to dwell on that any more, but, but suffice to say that it is important for opposition parties to help the government out sometimes when they get themselves into a spot of bother. I also have to say that veterans have expressed to me um, their uh, surprise that the government has seen fit to move with such speed on this particular issue uh, when the government has been dragging its feet um, so substantially on another issue which is perhaps of even more significance to veterans, and that is the rewrite uh, of the War Pensions Act, uh, some, a process which was begun over five years ago uh, um, when the Labor government asked the Law Commission to uh, carry, a, carry out a review of the War Pensions Act. And that review was returned to the government uh, more than two years ago now. And the national government has had those two years since to get on with the job. Now, nobody uh, would say that it is a, an easy job. And I think uh, any veterans organisation and any individual veteran would have said that um, they would give the government 12 months' grace to get on with that job and sort out how they are going to introduce a new uh, War Pensions Act that um, responds to the contemporary needs uh, of, uh, of New Zealand's veterans. Uh, but now I think it's fair to say that veterans are getting tired of this government uh, dragging its feet over what is such an important issue to them, what is an issue, is an issue of equity, it's an issue of justice, uh, and it's an issue of recognising the service uh, that was carried out on behalf of our nation and on behalf of decisions made by politicians. And it is only right that we as a parliament get on with the job uh, of recognising that service in a more proper way. Nevertheless, Mr Speaker, uh, Labor does support this bill. We are pleased to see uh, the completion of the Nas National War Memorial. We're pleased to see that it will be done in time to honour uh, the cen centenary of the uh, landing at Gallipoli. Um, we do believe it's unfortunate the government has got itself in this position, but, Mr Speaker, we're from the opposition and we're here to help. I call the honourable member...